Hello and welcome to the Strategy of the Week tutorial for 3rd of May 2013. My name is Steve Chappell, the Director of Educational Services here at VectorVest. The presentation this weekend is To Hedge or Not to Hedge, Surviving Turbulent Times. You know, the past month's trading activity in the Australian share markets prompted me to think about different ways investors can plan or plow through difficult times. This week, we'll focus on utilizing short positions as a portfolio hedge, which if used properly can minimize portfolio drawdown and help investors stomach difficult market situations. For those that don't know, short positions profit as underlying stock prices fall, and thus providing that hedge. Let's jump in the program and take a look. So here we are at the homepage for VectorVest 7 Australia, and the place that we'll begin is with market timing, because everything else follows from that. To do so, I'm going to go right up to the timing tab, and we'll click on the market timing graph selection. The first order of business for me here is to select the time frame for which we're going to do our study. I'm going to go right down to the bottom and click on the date window. Here I can use the calendar and I'm just going to take it back to the beginning of 2012. We're going to utilize a very important market timing system called the GLB RT Kicker. So over on the right, I'm going to go to Quick Dates change it from confirm calls to the GLBRT kicker. You'll notice that some green and yellow squares have appeared and the first green square in January of 2012 came on the 10th. So I'll select 10th of January. So I'll click on OK. And now we have the market period that we'll conduct our test through. The next thing I'd like to do is modify the screen so that we have the GLBRT kicker content. At the bottom, I'm going to change the signal to GLBRT kicker. And up in the top right, I'm going to change the layout to the same. And we'll push off the panel to the side and begin to discuss how the timing is going to affect the test or a couple of tests that we run through. In the first test, we're going to be running with long positions only. And how the system works for each of these green triangles, and we can see that first one again did come in 10th of January, it provides an opportunity to pick up shares. Of course, every investor should have a basket size in mind, and in this testing we're going to run with five stock baskets, as it appears appropriate for the Australian share market. On the 10th of January, we'll go ahead and acquire all five of those positions straight away. You can step in one at a time on these greens if you feel it's more appropriate to your investing style. Each of the yellow circles represents a neutral period. A neutral period is when either of the conditions that have to be met for a green triangle do not exist. So what constitutes a green? Well. The green triangle came in here on 10th January because we had a green light in the price column of the color guard and our RT moving average combinations below were bullish where the green line, the 5 day MA of relative timing, is above the 20 day or the white line that appears in the RT section. So we took an indicator that deals with short term price direction and smoothed it out just a bit and get bullish and bearish signals to confirm the green lights that appear in the price column of the color guard. So those conditions exist for each of the green triangles. Then we simply ride the stock prices as the market continues higher and hopefully we profit from them. We will have some stops in place and we'll discuss those as we get in further into the test. When a red triangle appears, this is when a confirmed down situation occurs in VectorVest, where the price of the VectorVest Composite Australia falls for a couple of weeks, crosses below a 65-day moving average, and the MTI confirms that by falling below 1. In these situations, one investor could just simply go to cash, and we'll deal with that as our base case. We don't encourage any investors to hold long positions and confirm market downs because there's an extreme likelihood that the market continues down, just as it did here. 
So we'd simply stay in a cache position with our initial test until the next green light appears. And then we begin accumulating the five positions again and ride them up with stops to the next confirm down. And we simply repeat that process over and over. We'll see in a secondary portfolio that an alternative to that is to let your long positions run all the way through, thus lowering commissions and potentially tax situations, but also getting some new blood in there in short positions that profit when the market falls. This can minimize drawdowns instead of simply holding on to long positions and still keep you active and in the game all the time. And we've seen this to be a very effective portfolio management technique. So I hope this makes sense to you. If it doesn't, don't fret. We are going to run through some testing and I think you'll have a better understanding once we've done that. So let's take a look at what kinds of stocks we are going to buy when we have bullish conditions by our GLB RT kicker. I'm going to go ahead and close this out of the market timing graph and go to one of the more powerful tools in the VectorVest platform and that's Unisearch. If I click Unisearch, here I want to select a very important strategy that's been performing exceptionally well in the Australian share market. It's called Stalwarts. The easiest way to find it is to alphabetize the list. From here we simply select any search. I can hit S on the keyboard. It'll jump me down to the S section of the search directory. And then we'll just scroll down the remaining way to Stalwarts. Stalwarts has some very interesting criteria, so let's take a look. First and foremost, we're looking for average volume greater than or equal to 100,000, which gives you some nice liquidity to work with. More interesting is the next criteria, where we look at the industry group level, and that has to be equal to the t only the top five industries that we track in the Australian share market, who exhibit the best combination of RT and CI. And so in layman's terms, we're looking for industries that have the strongest, steadiest upward price growth persistence. That's your CI portion. And the relative timing ensures that the short term direction is quite strong as you're making your stock selection. Wonderful sort. Love everything about what, what that sort does for investors. We're not going to look at any market indices or ETFs and we're going to make sure that we've got at least a dollar price point on all the stocks, although many of these tend to be h much higher than that. And finally, we even sort the stocks that this search returns by that same RT times CI, so the stock graph will look very similar. It'll have very strong price growth persistence, at least the best of what's available at the time of the search. If you're coming off a strong market correction, it could still have some downward action, but it has the best long-term price pattern and short-term price pattern available within those industries exhibiting the same patterns. Let's just run it currently and take a look. If I click on Run Search, here we have some stocks down here at the bottom. G8 Education, Ainsworth Game Tech. I'm sure you've heard of some of these. If we just graph the top few, We'll right-click and go to View Stock Graph. Look at how beautiful a price pattern this stock has. If I skip down just a bit further, another nice pattern. Yet another nice pattern. Look how smooth and persistent some of these stocks are. And of course the industry pattern would look much the same. This is the kind of stocks you want to favor, particularly when times are tough. Let me explain further. If I close out of the graph and go to our model portfolio, I'm going to go to the Portfolios section, and on the Portfolios tab, if I go to the VSA Model Portfolio for 2013, look how well this portfolio has performed this year, even in the midst of that giant pullback that we had just weeks ago. We're up 12.34%, and you'll notice that we've got positions currently in the portfolio all of which are long. We did mention in today's views that we would consider closing long positions and going short should the market decide to break out to the downside. 
But if I scroll to the right, we can look and see that we've got some nice gains on most of these stocks. And these happen to be stalwart stocks that were fairly recently acquired. We did get into this basket uh, beginning on 23rd of April. So hopefully we've at least impressed upon you that stalwarts is a great search selection for the current market. Now let's see how well stalwarts has done since the beginning of 2012. To do that, I go up to Backtester, and from Backtester, I can backtest an idea. The first set of selections deals with account settings, and we're going to use all the default selections in this box. We're going to start with the typical $25,000 account. We've got our commissions in at $20 per trade, and we're not using margin. The next box deals with the timing model that you want to utilize. Now, you do have to have the auto tester function. Uh, which is an additional purchase, feel free to give us a call and we can set you up with a trial. But in order to do that, I'll simply come over here to the right and we'll change it to GLB RT Kicker. Another nice thing or feature here is it does recap the rules. Up signals are given when a green light is signaled in the price column of the color guard and that RT Kicker moving average combination is bullish. Down signals or when the confirm call becomes a confirm down and it goes neutral if one of the two considerations for an up is not met. In the automation rules up it would make sense that we'd want to think about making money in up markets and so we're gonna make sure that we have buy long selected. I'm gonna go right down to the search directory and we put the unisearch searches right here for you. We can get to stalwarts the same way just click S on the keyboard Scroll down a bit further and select stalwarts. Under stop criteria, well, we've got a nice interesting set of stops for you. We're going to go to percent gain loss for this test and we're going to select 50% gain, 15% loss, which is a very reasonable combination. I'm sure many of us are willing to take a 50% gain in a stock. And at the same time, do we want to sit in stocks that fall further than 15% from our purchase price? Well, it's sort of dead money. Why sit in that stock when you have another stock out there with an opportunity to gain 50? And so that's the thought process behind this type of a stop selection. Under more settings, I am going to drop the position size at the top down to five. We are going to replace positions on this side of the portfolio. In the when entering this situation box, we're going to choose don't close any open position. This is important for this selection because you're going to receive green ups and then go into neutrals and then back into ups and so forth. And so you don't want to keep turning your portfolio over five stocks at a time on every fresh green signal. And when we get that down situation, it still knows to clear everything out. At the bottom, we'll also make one final change. We are going to specify that we only buy up to 2% of what is the average volume on any position. Now, this is still a bit lenient, but certainly helps to solidify your test. In a down, we're simply going to go to cash. And that's generally the most copable way for many investors to deal with down markets instead of selling short. So we'll start there. In a neutral, we simply do no action. And what this means is we let our stops dictate what happens to the current positions in the portfolio, but we do not replace them. No matter whether we're taking a gain or a loss, nothing is replaced in a neutral. We need to set up the same test period that we saw earlier in the market timing graph. So I simply go back to January. We'll select the 10th. And it is interesting to know, if you don't know already, that these are considered end-of-day signals, of course, and so we would not take action until the morning of the 11th. So we'd buy our first set of five stocks then. If any stock hits a stop along the way, we sell it as of the next day at the open. And so it works that way for any type of signal that's received. Last thing to do is to give it a name. So we'll call it Stalwarts. 
we'll give it the start date of 10th of January and I usually like to put the stops in there as well and if you like you can put the percentages you can come up with a naming convention that works for you so we'll go with this and all I have to do is click finish and run well hey I like the general idea of what's happening here here's a portfolio that over the course of the last year and a half we'll call it is up 27 percent for an annualized rate of return of over 20 percent a year would that work for most of you we're doing so in relatively great stocks to purchase we'll also notice that on the whole most of the drawdowns are not too terrible to deal with we do have a substantial pullback there but on the whole things look pretty good if I slide some of these boxes around up top we'll notice that our max drawdown comes in at 11 percent that's really in a, in a zone where most investors would be comfortable that's the highest peak in the equity curve to the lowest valley and I like to think of that as maximum pain and in this case it's pretty dull pain but let's see what we can do if in these downs instead of going to cash do you see how we have these flat periods what might happen if we add in the short side well to do that it's very simple I can simply come up to the top and copy our existing back test I'm gonna come down to automation rules for down and instead of going to cash we're gonna sell short from the list I'm gonna pick on one that gives you a reasonable price point to where shares will more likely be available typically you don't want to mess with little two and three dollar shares to begin with but oddfellows seems to be a pretty good choice so we'll come down not to oddfellows long but to oddfellows short and this is a strategy that was actually developed by a user group up in Cleveland Ohio so by users much like yourselves very good search if I go up to the top for stop criteria I tend to want to manage short positions you know, on a personal level different, differently and I'm gonna give you some food for thought I'm gonna to go to a percent gain loss I like to put some tighter management in there we'll go with 20 and 10 uh, as they tend to be a little bit more volatile at times you can get to those gains quickly and you definitely want to think about cutting losses short on the short positions you know keeping them small if I go to more settings we'll still deal with the five positions and remember since we're going to be in a hedge situation we may not ever get to that full five positions if the long positions continue to do well but any opportunity to stick a stock or a share or two in the portfolio we would enter in a short position to help mitigate that drawdown see if we can get that 11 percent down to an even more reasonable level we will try to open as many of them as we can straight out of the gate in a confirmed down I am going to have to change the when entering the situation to don't close any open position that keeps those longs in there that are still healthy and trying to get to that 50 percent gain if we continue down to the very bottom we'll drop this to the two percent we'll come down to the name description and let's just simply call this one hedge for sake of time and I'll click on finish and run okay well what do you notice different about the equity curve one of the things you'll notice is that we don't have any cash periods so instead of going to cash what we did was kept the long positions that were performing okay possibly very well and for any opportunity that arose we got a short position in there that can make money as the markets falling you'll notice that during instead of being flat in those cash periods we've now allowed for some portfolio growth and done so in a very reasonable manner if we look at the information up at the top we have 87 percent winning trades on this portfolio which is higher than just with the long positions and going to cash we've increased our gain by a substantial amount up to 40 percent now 30 percent annualized our commissions actually went down to just 
$240 for the year and a half. Very reasonable. And our maximum drawdown jumped down nearly three, a little over three percentage points. And so we've made it even more comfortable of a situation to sit through. If I come down to the bottom, we are holding four positions currently. And look, we have two longs and two shorts. Isn't that perfect for the current market condition where we're really unsure whether the market's going to decide to break up and continue? Or potentially, did we hit another top and the market's going to fall for a little bit? In either case, you're prepared. You're loaded up on both sides. And this portfolio should hold together quite well. If we scroll out to the right, we'll also notice that we have a gain on each and every position that's in there. Should the market rally, perhaps some of these go shorts go down and hit that 10% loss, and we get more and more long positions back in the portfolio. At least one to potentially three. Should the market fall, it's just vice versa. You know, these long positions have a good bit of, of time in them before you'd be acting with those. But you could pick up an additional short position, for example, and get an even better hedge in there. So I hope all this makes sense. Uh, it is a wonderful portfolio management tactic. It does make your portfolio drawdowns more moderate and easier to deal with. I hope you really enjoyed this week's strategy of the week. And like always, we'll see you again next week with more food for thought. And so thanks for tuning in this weekend.